Mm -hmm. I like that song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. I don't think I've heard it before since coming here. But you've played it a couple of times now. All right, Kayla and Malin and everyone, can you uh, take a moment to listen? Let's first pray. Yes, I called your name. <laughs> yeah. Okay, God, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be here today. Thank you for uh, that we have access to your word, the Bible, um, that we can meet in a church like this, Lord, and not have fear of anyone persecuting us because we walk into this place freely. Lord, I thank you for these privileges that we enjoy here in the United States of America. Lord, we know that not everyone has these same opportunities, God. Uh, so we, we just want to Make note of that. I just want to make note of that. And thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll help us to use these opportunities to benefit not just us, but those that you place around us and those that you place in our lives. God, help us to use these benefits and opportunities that we have to help spread the word of who you are and your kingdom and your glory, that there is more to life than just what we see here on earth. Lord, be with me today as I um, share a little bit of your word. And God, I pray that you will be in my mouth and be in our minds, God, as we hear and ponder and think about what it is that you have for us in this season, this first Sunday of 2022. Send your name again, we pray, God. We're here because you made a way and we thank you for that amen um once i was really angry with someone in my family as we were folding clothes i'm not gonna say who it was but i remember we were trying to fold these sheets and the other person was on the other end, you know, and I'm mad about something. I don't remember what it was, but I remember snapping the sheet because I was so angry and out pops a pair of blue jeans to which we both looked at that and just started laughing because I, that was just totally unexpected. Not what we thought was going to happen at all. Um, and it helped to break the mood because I, I was just so upset about something. But as soon as that happened, I everything changed. So did I plan for those jeans to get sort of twisted up in there? I didn't even know they were there. But God used that to change the mood and to change the atmosphere. And then we were able to sort of move on with our day yet again. I thank God for that. And I, I open with that, just being reminded that we need God to act in our lives. He does act. He does do things. But sometimes we don't think about it. We just forget. Life gets busy. Lots of things happen. And we just we forget about these things that happen. You know, this is the first Sunday of 2022, as you all know. And if you were to, I don't know, when I was younger and we listened to the radio, maybe you still listen to the radio, but I remember growing up and um, at this time, this week, it would always be like the top hits of the previous year. They would play all of, you know, I guess most requested songs and all of that. And there would be a time of looking back and remembering. Um, when I looked online, I saw that this happens in a lot of spaces. On the news, they'll talk about most reported news stories or most viral incidents or most watched movies. Or We, we all sort of kind of go back and think about what has happened. But I want to 
take a moment and say, well, as we do these things, maybe we could also remember some of the disappointments that happened too this past year. Maybe that's easier to remember than all of the good things that happened last year or that we have in our life now. If I were to give you a moment right now to consider just right off the top of your head, what are the most key things that has happened to you this past year? Could you take a moment and just think about that for a second? What was most meaningful to you last year? I once heard a saying, it was something like, we're either going into a storm, we are either going into a storm, in a storm, or about to head, or coming out of a storm. You know, it's always, your time in life is one of those three, right? Going into a storm, in the storm right now, or coming out of a storm. I don't know what you might think about that but if you think of things that way it's almost like a a being to me it's like being in a state of readiness i don't know i'm sure you guys remember i remember it was significant for us last year in february that was when we had ice on the road um at the start of that it was a hundred car pile up on 35 and then right after that was the power outage <laughs> you know that that all happened right around valentine's day it happened in february um, last year that that caused quite a ruckus here in texas and i i thought i i don't know how it affected you all here i mean maybe you all were prepared um from the conversation this morning about the fact that the temperatures dropped suddenly <laughs> last night and again probably tomorrow night maybe it sounded like you guys are, were prepared prepared then prepared now i don't know but i heard a friend say that last year she didn't buy the wood that she would normally buy because you know had, didn't really have a need for it so she didn't buy it and wham <laughs> there was a need she wished she had bought that wood re re recognizing that it is winter and something could happen you know what she went through has caused her to this year make sure she had some wood and a lot more too just stored up it's like we need to remember what's possible maybe sometimes we just forget what has happened, what could happen, what's going on. God said to remember, lest we forget. So what are we remembering? So today, what I wanted to talk to you about and just bring to mind, because a lot of things is going on in life, right? You just took a moment to think about some significant things that happened to you last year, but I bet a whole lot more happened than just those significant things. Lots of things happened last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that. But God says to remember. If you look in your Bible, if you want to turn with me in Joshua 4, um, I'll read a short passage. It's seven verses. But I kind of use that as just one example out of many from the Bible that talks about God saying to remember. And here's an example that happened before this time in Joshua. Do you guys remember what happened after the plagues? After, you know, when God was um, called Moses and used him to 
rescued his people from enslavement by the Egyptians. Do you remember what happened to finally free them from the enslavement of the Egyptians? Anybody remember? There was an act that would that first happened. It was the very first time that God called them to sacrifice a lamb. One year old, unblemished, take the lamb, put the blood of the lamb over the house, and those in the house would be saved from death. That was the first Passover. After that happened, God said, remember this. Do you remember this. Remember what I have done to provide for you, to save you. But here in Joshua, in Joshua 4, 1 through 7, Joshua is, at first, he's presented as the new Moses. Moses has died at the end of Deuteronomy. And here in Joshua is the new Moses. We'll call him the new Moses. It's Joshua. But the people don't know. Is God with Joshua like he was with Moses? They don't know because this is a new person here. So let's see what God does through Joshua as they, yet again, it's so interesting, they're here at the point of there being a river that they needed to cross in order to get to the promised land. Uh, there's a lot to read here, so I'm j I just chose a little small section. It's Joshua 4, verse 1 through 7. It kind of highlights what happened anyway. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So what's happened so far? God said, choose 12 men, one from each tribe, and tell them to pick up stones and carry them over with them. Verse 4, so Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites. A stone on his shoulder must be a big stone, not some little pebble rock that you could put in your pocket. He says, pick it up, put it on your shoulder. Verse 6, to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan, the river, was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. God said, I want you to remember what has happened here in this place. And he used an object in this case, right? In the Passover, it was blood. Here in Joshua, it was a stone picked up right from the middle of the riverbed where they crossed over safely, all of these people. God says to remember. And even in here, God said, don't just remember, I want you to make a point of remembering. In this case, pick up a stone and then don't just hide the stone, put it somewhere so that later people will see it and ask questions about it. And that'll be your opportunity to say what I've done for you. That your children will ask, what's these stones about? You know, often uh, my children and I, we get to go different places and we see interesting things in different places where we go. But I got to confess, a lot of times we don't take time to research and find out what's the meaning of some of the things that we see. We don't have guides there to explain anything. There's no plaque. We just see it and like, huh, that's interesting. And then we just move on with our lives. But here in this case, God is saying, put it somewhere so that when your kids ask about it, you can tell them about me and what I've done, how I saved you, rescued you, and, and led you 
from slavery into the, the promised land, the land that I have chosen for you. Do we share these stories with others? Do we remember what God has done? Do we tell others what God has done in our lives? There's another example that's from the Old Testament, for, but from the New Testament, everyone that, well, not everyone, but most people that are Christians, you know, try to remember this, just as Jesus has said, what did he say to do this in remembrance of me? Does that sound familiar? Jesus also reminds us to remember that passage it's mentioned a couple of times in the Bible, but an example is in Luke, Luke 21, 14 through 20. It's the Lord's Supper. I'll just read that because God's word is never returns void. Luke 21, 14 through 20. Oh, Luke 22, sorry. Luke 22, 14 through 20 says, when the hour came, because Jesus is at the table with his disciples. This is his last meal before he knew what was going to happen next. They didn't know, but he knew. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Interesting. They were at the Passover. We talked about the Passover back in Exodus when God chose Moses told him what to do with the plague and leading um, them through the plagues and then through the final blood offering of the perfect lamb. That was back then. But now look, Jesus is saying, verse 15 in Luke chapter 22, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Verse 17, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, just like his body. And gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus said and demonstrated a time of remembrance that he's saying, do this in remembrance of me. He's saying, do this. And he gave them objects to to sort of remember the blood wine grape juice whatever you want to use to signify what 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 does that mean you know i guess it's just like me going around looking at things if i don't take time to think about what does this mean then it just the meaning is lost but we know if we thought about it we know if we've been taught we know if we've We've done some research. We know if we look back to God, we know that this cup with the wine in it or the grape juice or the whatever it is that we have in here that signifies Jesus' blood here, if we know what it means, then we can remember. We can remember God. We can remember all the things that he's done for us. Not, but not just the cup, the bread too. We can remember that he took, Jesus took the bread and broke it. He gave up himself for us. I don't, if, if you were to take time and slow down enough in life to really think about this, um, it's just amazing what the Lord has done. What he has provided. I'm guilty of running through life quickly. And I don't slow down enough to think about these things. Once I had someone share with me the whole idea of the new covenant. This, this Lord's Supper. We know about the wine, right? Or the juice. 
Where does it come from? It comes from grapes, right? But where do the grapes come from? The grapes come from the earth that was tended by the farmer, that was carefully selected at the right time and then crushed to provide, manufactured and packaged, right? To provide what we have now today. It didn't just come out of thin air. It was a process of God working through the elements and the earth and people taking what God has given them and turning it into the juice that we have. It's amazing when you when you think about that. I, I had to have someone sort of describe this. And the more I listened, the more I was like, yeah, this is what Jesus was doing, but we just we just run through life and we don't think about it we don't remember even the bread right where does bread come from the wheat from the earth can we just make wheat on our own no we need the sun we need the rain we need time all of that is given to us not by our doing i have you know five dollars in my pocket can i make more sun can i make more time that's outside of my hands. God has done his part and people, farmers, workers, they do their part. They harvest the wheat, they manufacture it and turn it into something that we can eat that nourishes our soul. God took that, something that came from the Lord himself and from people, put it together and made a loaf of bread God said, I'm the bread of life. And he took that bread and broke it. He gave up himself and broke himself for us. That we would be filled. That's just amazing when we think about that. Sometimes all we can remember is the bad. But if we take time to think about it, and sometimes through the help of others, right? Who remind us that God is near. God says to remember these things. Remember what I have done for you. What are we remembering? You know, all of this really doesn't matter if God means nothing to you. So the question is, who is God to you? Do we know who God is? Do we trust him? How can we really know God if we don't spend time with him? I know we're here today. This service lasts about an hour. We meet once a week. One hour a week with God versus all the other hours doing a whole lot of other things is is kind of unbalanced so the question is as we think about this new year and we think about how last year went are you satisfied with the amount of time that you spent with god I have a question. Who is your teacher? Where have you been taking your cues from in life? What shapes your thinking and your heart? Is it the news? Is it your friends? Is it your paycheck? Your grades? What others say about you? What's been shaping your mind and your heart? What have you been following after? Is it God? You know, I don't know. You know. God knows. What are we remembering? (laughs) 
You know, I had given up on praying for my family member to come to know Christ. I just thought it just wasn't going to happen, so I sort of let that go. But you know what I realized this summer? God was working even after I had given up. My brother knows the Lord, and I gave up. Somehow, God was still working in his life. Somehow, God sent someone else to talk to him. And somehow, his heart was open to hear the truth. When he told that me that that happened, I thought, mm, I don't know. I, I heard him, but I was just like, I don't know. But as I watched his life, I could see he was different. God did not give up on him even after I did. I thought, you know what? I tried, I tried, I tried. It just, I don't see anything. I gave up. I'm so glad that God did not give up on me. God made himself known to me even when I wasn't paying attention. I specifically remember being in high school, yelling at my brother. We were arguing in the Kmart parking lot. Now Kmart, right? I think they went out of business now. Everyone I've seen. Uh, but in Virginia, there's a Kmart near, was a Kmart near our house. And we were just arguing and screaming at each other as we were walking and i thought i don't know i wasn't thinking about anything else other than the fact what we were yelling at each other about and this lady drove up in her car and she said well, she rolled down her window and she said to us is everything okay and i glared at that lady <laughs> i thought in my mind i was thinking who are you to be interrupting, you know, to be like in our business? Is th these are the thoughts that were in my mind at that time. That was my thinking at that time. And I think we must have said we're fine or something. And then she started to drive off and rolling up her window. She said, okay, well, God bless you. And she left. That thought has stuck with me for years and years. The audacity to just present Christ in this dark time. We don't normally argue like that. It was not a good time. But God showed up through this stranger, just, just highlighting that he was there. To me, that just is a reminder that God is near. That thought crossed my mind today as I drove here. I forgot about that, but it popped in my head. And I'm thankful for the memory. God is here and he's working. Even when things don't look like how we thought and we've given up. But the Lord is near. He's here and he's with us. Maybe we can pray to God and ask him to help us to remember. God has never lied to me. I don't think he's ever lied to you either. He loves you. I do think though that there are people and maybe even us, we hold on to certain things believing that if we just, I don't know, can get what we want out of God, we do that. But God is is faithful and he's persistent and he's there even when we mess things up what i'd like to say in conclusion is this verse i really love i might have mentioned this before romans 5 8 romans 5 8 um I'll just read it from the text because just so you know, I'm not making this up, but you can check your Bible too. 
Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's my favorite verse. It says we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to get everything right all the time. We don't even have to care for God to come and save us. Isn't that amazing? I didn't, I didn't really even think about that before because I wasn't interested. But the more I know this now, the more I think about it now, I just think it's so amazing. And I hope that people will not trade this love of Christ for anything else. Everything else falls short, falls flat. God is near. He is here. He is ready and willing, and he has given it all up for you. He's persistent, and he pursues you. He has been there for you all throughout all these years before, provided safety and a way for you to be here today. And I believe he has plans for you today and in the future. Will we tell our children this? Will we pass this message on? Will we remember these truths so that others may know who God is? It's important, but if not, then, well, I guess it'll just be some other thing that nobody talks about and a missed opportunity. That's so sad, but even still, just like how I'd given up on my brother, the Lord doesn't give up on us. He continues to work. He continues to pursue us. I pray our lives would be lived in such a way that others would want to know who this God is. Can we do that? I know I can't do that on my own. I need God to help me. So let's pray. Let's pray in closing now that God would help us I'll read verse 3 of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus as my prayer. I really like the lyrics of this song. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Lord, help us to turn our eyes back to you. Lord, thank you that you have given up yourself. Even when we were sinners, even when we were not interested at all and just did not care, God, you provided a way. You pursued us and somehow you got our attention. Somehow you capture our heart and you come into our mind and you help us to know you. You help us to see you. You help us to remember and think back on all the ways that you've been there. And we just didn't recognize it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for these blessings that you've given us. So many blessings that we just run past every day and don't even think about. Lord, forgive us, God, when we are only consumed with thinking about ourselves, thinking about what we want, what we're going to do, what our life is. God, we're here because you gave us life. We can't make our heart beat on our own. We can't breathe with our lungs. We can't all of the functions of our body are outside of our own self. We need you. 
And we thank you, God, for what you've given us. Lord, help us to see this every day, not just right now, but when we leave this place, God, remind us of who you are. Help us to tell others that we love you just from our actions and the way we live our life. We don't even have to use words. Lord, let our actions show that we are truly your disciples. We learn from you, from following you, not from following all sorts of things in the world. Lord, if there's anything in our life that you don't want us to continue and to carry on in this new year, help reveal it to us so that we can be changed, so that we can be made new in you. God, we cannot do these things without your help. We ask you, God, help us to be more like you. Help us to live our life like you lived your life willing to give it all up for someone else, maybe even someone that doesn't even deserve it. God, I, I cannot do this without you. Lord, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for every person that's here. I pray, God, that you will just help us, Lord. You don't you don't, you're not looking for perfection. You're just looking for an open, willing heart to come to you. Lord, we're willing to come to you. We ask God that you help us. It's in your name, Lord, the name above every name that we pray these things. Amen.